Okay, now something I want to call your attention to is the National Institute of Standards, or NIST. They have a special publication, 800-53, that you should be aware of as a Security Plus professional. It's a recommended security controls for federal information systems, but, well, federal information systems excluding systems dealing with national security. Okay, they have a higher level of, of security specifications that deal with those types of systems, that deal with national security, infrastructure, that type of thing. But for systems outside of that, with the federal government, the uh, special publication, or SP 800-53, deals with uh, information security controls that you should be aware of because they can apply or at least give you a, a very solid set of guidelines that you can apply in your own organizations or just basically to your own or for your own information. So specifically, we're dealing with SP 800-53 Appendix F, and that is controls prescribed for the information systems to protect what's known as the CIA triad. All right, it's not the CIA you may be thinking of. CIA stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Basically, the three things that we want to make sure that we can provide and that we can secure when we're talking about information uh, systems security or information security. All right, so basically, here's an example of just what the book looks like. You can get it from various locations, obviously, but it's definitely worth reviewing to add to your information security or system security background. All right, so let's take a look at the security life cycle or the security cycle itself. And what you see here is we have basically this kind of uh, revolving door, so to speak. We have assets, threats, weakness, exposure, risk, controls, and assets, and it kind of goes around and around. Well, what this pertains to is kind of what we need to do to kind of secure our assets and the threats and vulnerabilities that we, that we kind of associate with that cycle. So if we look at this, we have assets that can be endangered by what? Well, they're endangered by threats. Those threats are things that exploit weaknesses okay, vulnerabilities, if you will, in our systems. Okay, those weaknesses result in exposure. The exposure then leads to risk, and that's what we're talking about we want to avoid. We either want to avoid it or we want to mitigate. All right, so exposure leads to risks which are mitigated by controls, things that we put in place, whether they are operational, technical, managerial, you know, things that we, we're going to basically uh, incorporate into our processes, into our systems, into our infrastructure that protect, again, the assets. And it goes around and around. So it's a good idea to understand how these things kind of fall into play. Assets endangered by threats that exploit weaknesses resulting in exposure that lead to risks mitigated by controls to protect our assets. Okay, it goes on and on. So just to give you a general understanding of how these things kind of tie together and where each of these different definitions and where these terms fit within that broader security cycle.